Hello, and welcome to... The comic book review show... I haven't figured out a name yet. Today I'm going to be talking about Thanos wins. Good for him, huh? Finally. Good for you, Thanos. You earned it. Um, I don't know when this came out. I think it came out pretty recently. It's a collected edition of Thanos 13 to 18 and Thanos Annual 1. I've been a big Thanos fan for a long time. Back before I was hip. Ah, that's right. Um, I remember the original Infinity Gauntlet and the uh, Thanos Quest, which was the prequel to that. And, um... I think he's sort of a tough character because he's not, he doesn't have a lot of layers and he's just always mean. So he's kind of difficult to write, but um, this is a very good comic. It was uh, written by Donny Cates and uh, drawn by Jeff Shaw. Am I saying that right? G-E-O-F-F? -F? Jeff? G-O-F? Jeff Johns is another one. Am I saying that right? Let me know. In the comments, you can't let me know in the what well, you could write it phonetically, and then colored by Antonio Fabella. Let's hope I said that right. And it's the same team, uh, the same writer and artist team who did God Country. I don't know if you read that. Image did that. It's about like an old man, like has a big sword. And I did not like this comic book. I aggressively disliked it. <laughs> it was very, I I hated it so much. I complained about it for weeks because um, I didn't like the writing. I thought it was the writing was like really melodramatic and kind of juvenile and kind of overdone. There's a moment in there where the uh, you know like there's a god and he's like, "Give me my sword back," and the, the old man goes, "I don't care," or something like that. Like it's that kind of dialogue. Like everything is said like this, you know. Like there's one thing you don't understand. Pa was a man, or it's just very dramatic, melodramatic, and I may mean, know we're talking about comic books as people flying around with capes on, but I just did not like God Country. I thought it was too dramatic, and this Thanos has sort of a similar problem where I just have a problem with comic books where the whole, all the time they're trying to convince you like this guy is, it's really bad, it's bad, he's tough. You don't get it. You're supposed to, whoa, he's so, supposed to be really impressed. Yeah, I'm impressed. He's Thanos. But I don't know. Like, Jaws does a good job of, you're, you're impressed with Jaws, the shark. He's a big deal. You know, like, No Country for Old Men, that's another great, like, tough guy, scary. There's this bad dude. You're supposed to be impressed by how bad he is. Um, they do it very well. Friday the 13th, any horror movie, Halloween. But anyways, that's like kind of my overarching problem with this, is they're just like, he's so tough. You don't even know how bad Thanos is. I get it, he's bad. I don't want to say it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. A comic book bad guys also just can't compare to real life bad guys. I just don't know if I want to hear about bad guys anymore. Anyways. And this is one of those comic books where like the bad guy is sort of the good guy. Like there's no good guys in the co in this comic book. It's all just bad guys. Well, actually there are some good guys. But the bad guy is supposed to be who we relate to. Like we're in Thanos's shoes and his golden boots. And uh, so you're supposed to care about him. I mean Thanos has always been written as sort of a a bad guy that you can sort of relate to or sort of feel bad for you know his motivations are ostensibly like he's got some actual motivations like he's in love with death and he's not just they call him the mad titan but there is a logic to why he does all the bad things he does so he's sort of a care a bad guy that we're supposed to be able to not totally hate he's not just a total jerk but then I find that always kind of troubling. 
But anyways, okay, let's start. Let's start talking about the comic book. It's pretty long, so there it is. Thos ones. Letters got lost in the gutter, and uh, it's got a pretty cool opening. They're on this uh, planet, and he's talking about how badass this planet is, and then he shows you that it's just been decimated, and it's been decimated, of course, by Thanos, and he's really tough, and um, does a bunch of tough guy things. And then, it's raining blood. It's raining blood! Hallelujah, it's raining blood! Hey, hey, hey! And then the Ghost Rider shows up. Ghost Rider is the coolest part of this comic book. I really like him. It's such a fun uh, new take on uh, Ghost Rider. He's got the power cosmic. And he's kind of funny. He says funny dialogue. I kind of don't like his funny dialogue. It's not as funny as the writer thinks it is. And there's maybe a little bit uh, too much of it. Um, but that's like his character. He talks a lot. Um, and he ties Thanos up with chains that have been forged from uh, the bones of Saitarak. So you know they're good. And then he hauls, him, he hauls Thanos back through space. My son wanted to look at this comic book, so I had to pick a spread that was okay to show him. So I showed him this one. I was tricky to find ones where people aren't getting their heads chopped off. And he drags Thanos across the cosmos and across time using the time stone. And he... Oh, who is it? It's the... It's Thanos. Old Thanos. What? Um, and this is actually very similar to God Country in that the, this artist, Jeff... Joff... Shaw, Jeff Shaw, Jeff Shaw, Jeff Shaw, loves drawing old dudes, and this is perfect for him, old Thanos. Um, there's some really troubling stuff here about, I don't know, ever since I had a kid, I can't, baby stuff bothers me now. I'm such a sissy, but it's just, this baby Thanos and his mom goes crazy when she looks into his eyes, and uh, that bothered me. It's not a bad writing choice. It's just a new thing. And then here we got Thanos. Nice, nice spread. Gives you a little breakdown of his life. And they talk about how Thanos just got stronger and stronger while everybody else got old. There he is killing Captain America and Thor and the Hulk. And then this is kind of cool. They got the Celestials here. And how Thanos kills them is he's got Black Bolt. And he puts a, a knife in his stomach and he goes, Whoa! And, and then he makes a big sound or something and then kills all the Celestials. You should have just pinched him. You should have just, you know, on the earlobe and be like, ow. And that could have maybe, or stubbed his small toe. That hurts so much. I stub my small toe all the time. My body, it's like my body forgets it's there. It's like, that's not a part of your body, small toe. We can just walk that right through a door jam, eh? And then Thanos, little little Thanos hits big Thanos. Let's get a text from, oh, from Thanos. And a uh, bunch of stuff happens. Uh, oh, and then old Thanos gets down on his knees and he's like, please. So he brought young Thanos here to help him, and he's like, please help me, and then he punches him, and he loves it. Like, he punches old Thanos, and old Thanos is like, magnificent, or like, yeah, magnificent. He's like, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Hit me, baby. And then they fight, and uh, you got the nice big old man belly there, big fat. This guy loves drawing old men with muscles and fat bellies. And there's Lady Death. So basically, old Thanos wants young Thanos to help him. Should I be telling you the whole plot? I'm not sure if you want me to tell you the plot or if I'm just supposed to tell you a review. I won't spoil too much. So maybe I won't go through the whole thing. It is a cool drawing. Ah. Kind of a spoiler alert here on the cover. You know the Hulk's going to be in it. Um, 
So maybe I won't tell you the rest of it in case you want to read it yourself. I won't spoil it. Um, but I will say one of the weaknesses of this... Oh, so here's the thing. Well, I don't even know if I want to tell you that. I don't want to spoil too much. But I'll spoil it. Spoiler alert! Um, so it turns out that the Ghost Rider is actually Frank Castle. And this is one of those things where, like, it's supposed to be a big deal. Like, who? He goes, whoop! Oh, never heard of you. I think I'm supposed to think it's a big deal. I'm supposed to be surprised. But I kind of don't care about characters. Because they're all fake. Spoiler alert. I care about the writers. And they make me care about the character. Like, I don't know if you read Vision, Tom King's two-part Vision story. I don't care about Vision. But in that story, I really cared about him. He's trying to start a new life in the suburbs. And I cared about him in that context. And the context was specific to the character. But I don't have like a real allegiance to Vision now because of that. If he shows up in some other comic book or if it, you, you know, I found out that Ghost Rider was the Vision, I wouldn't go. Not my good friend, the Vision. You know, it's just kind of, I don't know. But that that's just me. So these types of turns don't really do much for me. The fact that the Ghost Rider is um, Frank, the Punisher. But it is a cool, cool turn. Um, and uh, Thanos old Thanos has a flaming sword and he tells young Thanos that he needs him there to help him fight uh, the Silver Surfer who's now black the black Silver Surfer uh, oh this is kind of one of the coolest parts in the book There's they tell you how Ghost Rider or how Frank Castle became the Ghost Rider it's kind of a neat uh, that's a neat section. Um, for a while, he's like Punisher Ghost Rider. He goes down to hell and he makes a deal with Mephisto and he becomes Punisher Ghost Rider. This is pretty cool. I'd like to see a comic with this in it. I was wondering if it's a pain in the butt to draw this fire. Like every time, every panel, you gotta draw that fire. I wonder if it's like, ugh. Although I guess it's easier than drawing like Spider Man's webs all over his costume. Because the fire can be different every time, but the webs have to be the same every time. Is there an intern? It just draws the webs. Maybe. Galactus shows up. I love this. He like a ton of blood comes out of his tummy. Yes, I said tummy. I say potty too. So you get you got a kid. So I say things like tummy and potty. And uh, so then the Ghost Rider teams up with Galactus, and that's how he becomes cosmic Ghost Rider. And then Thanos kills him really easy. I kind of like that. But I guess they got to do it. They got to hurry things up and then the Ghost Rider uh, ends up being with Thanos. I will say one thing about this book. Thanos is kind of a hard character to write because he's so predictable. You know what he's going to do. He always does the same thing. He kind of lives by a code. And um, he's a pretty simple character, really. Excuse me. Um, but even within that, the author finds a way to keep surprising you. Now, he has an advantage in that this story is set far in the future, and so he can make really crazy things happen. He doesn't have to worry about continuity. So he can unveil that, or he can reveal that um, Ghost Rider's Frank Castle or Leak. He can reveal that, reveal that the Fallen One is the Silver Surfer, and now he's free from Galactus. And um, oh, there's a really good reveal here. I don't know if I should show you. Spoiler alert. So he's got Thor's hammer, which is cool. That was a cool idea, too. And this, isn't this a great piece of art? Who did that? Christian Ward. Good job, Christian. And then this cover's kind of cool. It's like a... Uh, I know there was a um, Hulk cover like this. When it was the original cover, this Hercules cover. Um, I can't... I don't know which was which. But, uh, so then, the Silver Surfer fights Thanos, and the Ghost Surfer, Ghost Rider Surfer, fights him, and he smashes his face, and, um, big fight, Hulk shows up, big fight. Not that I don't like big fights, but it's just, you know, I may like it. Um, yeah, that's one bad thing about this book, like, once you get past the halfway mark here, 
It's just, it is just kind of like fight, 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 which is fine, but like, it's one of those big fights where every hit is like, boom, boom. Did you read World War Hulk? It's exhausting. Every fight's just like a huge fight, like big hit, kind of like, boom, boom. And then finally, Death shows up. I guess this whole thing is like Thanos is in love with Death and he's trying to impress her. Why? I don't know. I mean, that's his thing. And she's black and white. And my foot. Ha! What? Pit! Pit! There she is. Here comes the bride, all dressed in gray. And she's. she's kind of, it's kind of weird. They have her like do pantomime. It's almost like funny. Because she doesn't talk. Having her be funny though. It's a weird, and then she's like, you got it, you know, boop, nailed it. Um, I don't know about that. You know, it's kind of, I mean, it's a fun choice. It's a fun choice. It's a, I guess go for it. Better to go for it than not. Um, but, uh, and then uh, Thanos fights Thanos. What do you guys think about this when there's like a big fight and then they have like dialogue or not dialogue but narration over it that doesn't And then we got a Krakum, a Thum, and he like look Thanos is beating up Thanos so bad that Lady Death is actually shocked and looks away. She wouldn't be shocked and look away. She's Lady Death. She's seen worse. She's seen the last season of The Office. She saw how far it dropped off. And then uh, Thanos ends up not killing him. Lady Death makes another funny face. She's like one of the characters from Friends, doesn't she? And then... Uh, I won't tell you what happens at the very end. And, and. It's a nice letter from Donnie. I, this font drives me insane. It's condensed. Don't set body copy condensed. It looks bad. It's hard to read. And then at the end, we got a bunch of little short stories that are like kind of funny. It's like the ghost writer telling us these different short stories. I strongly disliked them. Because they're all like kind of funny. Oh, this was the only one I like. Thanos shows up to to torture this kid on every birthday. He like messes with them. Uh, it was just kind of funny. Um, but then there's a bunch of other ones in there. They're not bad stories, but I don't know. After reading this whole big Thanos story that was, was good and it was supposed to be very dramatic. And then you got all these like joke stories. It really undercuts the whole universe. What little uh, believability there was. Uh, then at the end, it seems like uh, Ghost Rider was talking to Odin. Is that who it is? Yep. And uh, he goes into Valhalla, and that's going to lead into the uh, the next Cosmic Ghost Rider now. Is that what it is? Cosmic Ghost Rider, which hopefully will be really good. He seems like he'd be an interesting character to write. And then the last page, we just got to add Thanos, the God Quarry. I guess that's the quarry where they mine... They mine gods, and it, and then it gets abandoned, and it fills up with water, and the kids dare each other to jump, to jump in. That's it. That was the that's my review of Thanos. Thanos wins, and he does, pretty much. It's good. It's a good comic. I don't know what more I wanted. So picky. <laughs> He's a great comic. Am I happy? Nope. I want more. It's like we're like, it's good, but it wasn't great. Sorry. It was good. Okay, we're running long here, so I gotta wrap it up. What does Doogie have on his desk? Little Thanos, Mighty Mug. I love Mighty Mugs. I got some in the back there. Look, Galactus. It's backwards. I'll never get it. I'll never figure out the backwards thing of the camera. Anyways, that's the end of the thing. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you again soon. And I'm not sure what I'll review next. I think I'm going to review Heroes in Crisis. 
start with those. I've heard they're interesting. It's Tom King. I like Tom. So, so maybe I'll do that next. Okay, bye-bye. Wait, did I click off? I didn't. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, I got to do the, do I do the music again? Okay, let's do the music. Here we go. Leading out with the music. Thank <laughs> you.